to worship at Lutheran Church of the Master. We are a faith-led fellowship called to serve all in Jesus' name. It is the day of Pentecost, so I thought I would wear something fancy today to help us celebrate. And for those playing at home, yes, my mother did make the chasuble. Thank you for asking, and thank you to her for making such beautiful garments. It is the birthday of the church, as some people describe this day, so happy birthday, church. Uh, I will not sing happy birthday for you, however, and you can all thank me for that later. Thank you for watching this, for participating in worship as we gather together in the ether. Thank you to Steve Schlesing, our video producer extraordinaire. Thank you to Dylan Pyatt, who has produced an amazing rendition of the Lord's Prayer, which we'll share later in our service. Thank you for all who participated in bringing this worship opportunity to life for us. These are difficult days. We will get through this together. I realize Things are taking longer than any of us expected and certainly longer than any of us desire. But your health and safety are at the forefront of my mind as we make decisions to move forward. We will continue following the guidance of Governor Whitmer as we consider returning to in-person gatherings. And when that time comes, we will have clearly laid out protocols, expectations, and information for you about what that will look like. We will do everything we can to create a safe environment. Check your email, the church website, even your mailbox occasionally, the Facebook page for plans moving forward. Join us Wednesdays as we conclude our Bible study on Matthew's Gospel. Join us on Sundays at 4 o'clock for our congregational check-in. If you're able, please consider to continue supporting Lutheran Church of the Master financially. I give thanks to God for your faithful generosity. You can give online, you can send gifts in the mail. Those are a blessing. If you have need of necessities, please, please contact the church office. We will do what we can to provide for you and care for you and connect you with the kinds of resources that you are in need of. And now we gather. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This day's reading for the day of Pentecost comes to us from the book of Acts. Uh, as a gift to all who serve at Lutheran Church of the Master as deacons, I will read this day instead of one of you. Again, you can thank me later. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And sudden, suddenly from heaven there come a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of, East, of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No. This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In these last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. One of the things I miss from summers in Virginia where I grew up are thunderstorms. I mean, there are thunderstorms in Michigan, but nothing like what we had growing up in Virginia. They were powerful storms. Four o'clock in the afternoon, the sky suddenly gets dark with black clouds and the winds kick up. And you know it's going to be a really good storm by watching the maple trees. And when all the leaves of the tree flip upside down, you know it's going to be a gully washer, or as my father would say, a frog strangler. The winds are going to howl, and the storm's going to rage, and the thunder's going to crack, and you're going to feel it in your bones. A big storm's blowing through. Well, throughout Scripture, when you hear about the Holy Spirit, often it's described as a wind, this wind of God. And the thing about wind, just like those storms in Virginia that I talked about, the thing about wind is you can't see the wind, but you only see its effects. And you see its effects and you know it's there. That's how the Holy Spirit works. You see what it does, you see its effects, and then you know the Holy Spirit is there. You watch what's happening. In the book of Acts, 120 people gathered together, brought by the Holy Spirit. They stopped whatever they were doing first thing in the morning and showed up because the Spirit brought them together. And then they heard the Word of God. They heard the Word of God and they heard it in their own languages. From all over the known world, they heard God speak to them. They heard that word of promise and hope. And thousands out in the street heard it, and their lives were transformed. And then Peter stood up to speak. All these things done because the Holy Spirit would have it no other way. Think of Peter. It's his first sermon. And when last we saw Peter, effectively, the last time we saw him, he was outside Pontius Pilate's palace. And they were saying, you're a Galilean, weren't you one of them? And Peter said, no, I don't even know who this Jesus is. Not once, but three times. He denied knowing him. Now, I don't know what particular sin is on your heart this day. I don't know what particular failing or burden you bear. But if God can take Peter and use him to proclaim the good news and preach this powerful, life-changing sermon to the people gathered on that first Pentecost day? If God can use Peter after, on the eve of the crucifixion, he denies Jesus and abandons him, God can certainly use you. Because what God does and what we celebrate on the day of Pentecost is the way the Holy Spirit breaks down barriers that divide us. In that that first Pentecost Sunday, that first celebration, it was the barrier of language. The different languages that kept people apart and kept people from hearing the word of God. Right now in our days of staying home and staying safe, it's the barrier of distance. I don't know about you, but I didn't really know anything about the 19 epi- 1918 flu epidemic until very recently. It wasn't on my radar. It wasn't something I paid attention to. And now I think about what life must have been like in the middle of that. And I think, too, but given my role, I think about pastors suspending worship in 1918. They didn't have the Internet, and videos and all this kind of stuff. Did they just like print out sermons they sent to people's homes once a week? How did they stay connected? It wasn't like they could go visit them. They were supposed to be sheltering in place too. But we have this gift because the church is not closed. Our in-person worship might be suspended, but the church is not closed. We are open. We are here. We are proclaiming the good news of God. And if in January you had told me that within a few weeks from now, 
Tens of thousands of churches around the world are suddenly going to have these online worship experiences that they never had before, never talked about. I'd say you're crazy. But that happened because the Holy Spirit wouldn't have it any other way. That's the Pentecost celebration. The wind of the Holy Spirit blowing into our world and into our lives. The church isn't closed. We are open. We are worshiping. We are gathering on Zoom for Bible study and council meetings and coffee hours. We're gathering on Zoom for congregational chats and even congregational meetings that call new pastors to churches because the Holy Spirit won't have it any other way. And there are even some amazing blessings in this. I was talking to Dawn Harris this past week, and Dawn said she is so thrilled because she does not hear very well. But she's figured out how to sync her hearing aids to her iPhone, and now she says, I hear every word you say. And even more amazing, she keeps coming back for more week after week because the Holy Spirit won't have it any other way. In the midst of all of this, there are these blessings because of the opportunities we have to connect. Now, we began all of this, if you remember, way back when in March, when it was still the season of Lent. Lent is the season we talk about focusing on prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And in a sense, we're still there. We are people of prayer. We pray for the needs of those we love. We pray for the needs of the world. We pray for the sick and the broken. And we have been doing that every day forever, and we will continue to, because we are the church. And we are fasting. We're fasting now from being together in person, to stay home, to stay safe, to care for one another, to live out our love of Jesus and love our neighbor by staying apart. And that's difficult. And then there's almsgiving, acts of charity and mercy, and stories of generosity abound One of those stories is the way people are doing something they never thought they would have done before, and that's making masks. I had to write down the list. I don't want to forget names. I'm sure I would. But I've received gifts of masks and seen the contributions of people like Nancy and Dawn and Peg and Dorothy and Shirley and Penny and Aubrey, and I'm sure many others of you. And Lutheran World Relief A couple of weeks ago, started a program called the 75,000 Mask Campaign. 75,000 Mask. They had to rename it, though, because they fulfilled the goal so quickly. Now it's the 75,000 More Mask Campaign because the Holy Spirit wouldn't have it any other way. These are difficult days. We are all growing weary of living the ways that we are living We are growing weary of working from home, of sheltering in place, of of having all of our lives bumped out of joint, of not being able to plan. And there is a grief that is beginning to, to become part of our reality, too. And these are burdens to bear. But we are the church, and we might not be together physically, and we might have suspended in person worship, but we are still praying for one another. We are still reaching out with mercy and compassion to one another. We are still lifting up one another in prayer and celebrating the gifts. We are still proclaiming the good news of God and looking to the future with hope, trusting in God's presence in all we do, because the Holy Spirit will not have it any other way. Amen.
uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places and praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere. Breathing energy into all things, heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness whenever we as a people are divided, unite us. Whenever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless doctors, nurses, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially Carrie, Phil, Dawn, Holly, Clinton, Barry, Brian, John, Addie, Doretta, Marianne, Anna, Liv, Matt, Don, and all those who serve to protect and defend our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. Just as Elizabeth greeted Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome. Give us this spirit when we meet others in this congregation and in all parts of our lives. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we may rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope as you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 我们在天上的父，愿人都尊你的名为圣。Father, unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name. 愿你的国降临。我们在天上的父。Father, unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name. 愿天国降临于我们，圣德的是我们的名分。Thy kingdom. Come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 愿你的旨意行在地上，如同行在天上。Father, unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name. 愿你的国降临，愿你的旨意行在地上，如同行在天上。我们日用的饮食。今。Amen. Amen. 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 今日赐给我们，免我们的债，如同我们免了人的债，不叫我们遇见试探，救我们脱离凶恶。And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von dem Bösen. 不叫我们遇见试探，救我们脱离凶恶，因为国度。<音乐><音乐><音乐>
，第三位请我们说，又如同我们面对人的债，不叫我们遇见试探，救我们脱离凶恶。For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. 全柄荣耀全是你的，直到永远。Amen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. 为国度、权柄、荣耀，全是你的，直到永远。阿门。Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. Here I am with our own image of the Holy Spirit descending as a dove in celebration of the gift of Pentecost. Thank you for watching this and for praying with me and for the whole body of Christ. Join us Sunday afternoons at four for our Zoom chat. Check your email, the church website, the church Facebook page for updates about what's going on and, and opportunities to be together virtually and eventually together physically. Please continue to support Lutheran Church of the Master financially. Your gifts are a blessing and a grace to us all. Stay safe, wear your mask, take proper precautions. Be gracious. We are all a little tired of this. Be of good courage and trust in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O、oh、God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.